All right, we'll get going. Good afternoon. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Week four for the Green Wave. This week we have Central Florida coming on Saturday. It's an 11 a.m. kickoff on ESPN News. Um, also on Saturday, um, we'll have the start of basketball practice for men's basketball. They'll practice here in the afternoon at the Hurt Center after the football game uh, at 3.30. Please let us know if you're interested in coming to that. It'll be open for the media. And then the women will practice in Hertz on Sunday morning at 8 a.m. 10 a.m. Send that to stand corrected. 10 a.m. Women at 10 on Sunday, the men at 3.30 on Saturday. Again, both of those are open. If you have any questions about uh, this week's game, uh, please let us know. And now is our head coach, Curtis Johnson. Well, since I guess we had the week off and we talked a little bit about the last week's game, I thought our team played very well, well, well against Maine. I thought they were a good team. They came in. I saw them. They won last week. They came in. They drove down the field after that. Our defense pretty much shut, it, shut them down for the most part. They had some big plays, but, you know, I thought we played well. Uh, offense kind of got going a little bit. I thought Teddy Veal and, and uh, Tanner Lee played well. The backs were outstanding, Sherman and Dontrell. Any questions about anything? Coach, have you talked about the or seen the Southern player Devin Gales? Uh, say, I can't say. the Southern player Devin Gales who suffered a neck injury. Yes. Um, and, and what goes through your mind when you well, see anything like that? <laughs> well, on, look, on you know, field? it's it's it takes me back to to, to our situation. You know, and, and all you can do is just pray for for those guys. And and, and you know, it's it. it as you see, when our kids get hurt, I always go out to the field just to make sure that, that they're okay. You know, you know, I just feel for the kid. I feel for the family. You know, our thoughts and prayers go out to them. It's just, it's just a tough situation, tough. Uh, you know, playing at 11 a.m., not something that you guys normally do at home. You've done it on the road. Is there any difference in what time of day you play? It is an early kickoff here. Is there something you have to do differently, getting those guys up? super early in the morning, all those kinds of things? Well, you know what, the one thing, we practice in the morning. So, you know, we practice, our practice starts at 840. And I, I thought I would have more day games. So that's why I kind of went to morning practices. But I think it's outstanding for us. I think we'll be up. I think we'll be ready. I mean, our kids, you know, they, 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 they get here about, you know, 730 every morning. So, you know, I think it'll help us. I hope this is an advantage for us. Just from a confidence standpoint, how much did your team need a game like the main game just to – get past those first two? Yeah, you know, I wish we had all of them were like this to get some confidence. You know, you know, the one thing you just never know with, with, with players in, who hadn't had much confidence is how well and, and how, what they'll do. And, you know, I was just so nervous, you know, you know, I was praying the whole time, you know, before the game. And I'm telling you, they came out, they played well, they were excited, the enthusiasm on the sideline. It looked like a whole different football team. You know, I was, I was just happy to see that. Can you go talk about Sherman and Dontrell really getting going? I know the, the big thing was trying to get Liz Edger going against Maine, but, but those two really, you know, put up a lot of yards. You know what I thought? I thought they did well. You know, when Maine did a little bit, they did a little thing, bit different. They played more eight-man front, and, you know, I guess they figured the same thing. They're going to make us throw it and run it. And, and, you know, so we stopped the run and, and make us throw it. And I thought we did, and I thought Dan, Dontrell did an outstanding job weaving through Dan Sherman, just catching the ball out the backfield. He's phenomenal doing those things. You mentioned a little bit there, you know, you didn't quite know how those guys were going to come out against Maine, pleasantly surprised. Do you have any idea until the ball's kicked off as to kind of if a team is locked in, if a team, I mean, like, what can you do to sort of judge that before a game starts? You know what, I've, I've, been, I've been wrong just as often as, as I've been right, you know, especially, you know, other teams, you, you just never know. You just hope that they, they begin to mature and they begin to take everything as serious and, and begin to get some confidence. If they mature and they're serious about the game and they're confident, I think that's what all you can really go on. And, and as far as uh, your athletic director announcing his resignation, um, what does that mean for you? He obviously gave you the opportunity here and, and kind of, you know, with the athletic department sort of in limbo, is there a direction that you'd like to, not necessarily a name, but a direction or something you'd like to see for the next person? Well, you know, first of all, I think, and I said it earlier, you know, I think Rick Dixon should be in the Athletic Director Hall of Fame. You know, just from what he's done, you know, carrying this program, you know, and being where it is, getting a new stadium done, what he did during the years of Katrina, and I really thank him so, so much. You know, I think as long as you're being around good people, you know, Brandon McNeil, Barbara, all those people, Scott Mitchell, all those guys are great guys for us, you know, and I, and I love being around them. I love working with them. You know, I love working for them. I mean, all those guys are great people. So, you know, as long as you get great people around you, you know, you know, people lead 
leave and, and come in, they go all the time. But, you know, Rick's, I'm going I'm to sorely miss him, but I just like the people. You know, the people around here are fantastic. Was there anything in particular that you saw in your team against Maine that sort of made a light go on and say, I'm glad that looks better now, heading into conference play? Was there one thing maybe more than anything else that was particularly good? Just as the game went on, the confidence seemed to rise, rise, rise. And I think this week of practice, the confidence is still – I hear more football confident – statements and I'm seeing more confident play. Now, will that carry on? I mean, this is a good football team that we're going to play. We know there are a, a, a lot of athletes that hadn't won, but, but just the confidence was the one thing that I really looked at going into this thing, and I'm really happy to see, you know, some guys are being more confident. Um, Justin Holman's listed back on their depth chart this week. I don't think they've had any confirmation that he's going to be ready or not. Say, say it again. I Justin Holman is yeah. back on their depth chart. How much of a difference does he make? You know, he's the quarterback. He's the one guy that, you know, I think that they depend on most, most of the year. You know, you just got to prepare for the team. I think they're a good team. You know, there's some good wideouts that, that are good. You know, he'll, he'll run it. He'll throw it. He, you know, we played. He, he's been a good player for them throughout. So you just got to prepare for all of it. You got to prepare for the Wildcat, which they did against uh, Furman a lot. You, you know, you got to prepare for, the, for the, all those quarterbacks. So you just got to be good and sound in what you do. You mentioned they're a good team despite – their record and they kind of they talk about resetting their season now because this is their their conference opener how much how, how tough I mean, what are you anticipating uh, in, in that game because they're a team that has only lost one conference game the last two years yes yeah, it's gonna be tough as nails I mean it, this, this team here knows the conference they know everybody I mean they, they're gonna be good they're gonna be jacked up you know for this for this game they gotta you know we gotta get a win they gotta get a win so it's gonna be one of those games that they're gonna they're gonna pull out all the stops they're gonna come in here ready to play Coach, knowing what you have facing you in October after this, your next three opponents are undefeated. <laughs> how, how, how critical is this game knowing that you have Houston, Navy, Memphis after that? You know what all these games are really must win games for us. We, we, we just a young, you know, we hadn't had much success in the conference. So we got to win as many as we can. You know, we got to come out. We got to play with a lot of confidence. We got to play with a swagger. We got to play hard for all these teams. You know, this, this game right here is, 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 you know, high, high on, on, on a red alert chart. You know, so, but all these get teams are good. And, and, you know, hopefully we can get this one and then move on to the next one and get the next one and the next one. Did you see anything different for, from Tanner Lee? Was it just his protection was better, you know, uh, judging from the main game to the previous two? Well, you know, just his – like I said, he was calmer in the pocket. He, he, looked, he, he looked like he wasn't at edge as much. He was much, much calmer. And then I thought he threw the ball extremely well. You know, I thought he made great decisions. And if he continues to do that, I think he'll be successful. When Maine's coach makes the comment after the game basically saying, you guys had just – tons of speed, way more speed and athletes and all this stuff. I mean, when you got here three, four years ago, that wasn't the case against anybody. Um, to have that, another coach say that, do you see the roster kind of building in the way that you want? And you, you've only displayed it in that one game so far, but you kind of feel well, it growing. That you know, it's funny that, you know, each, each opponent that we play, you know, they kind of make the same comments. You know, uh, uh, Coach Cutcliffe said the same thing. Johnson, Coach Johnson said, hey, look, you guys got a lot of speed. You guys moving in the right direction. I think we are moving in that direction. You know, it's unfortunate. We just don't have the wins and the losses. I mean, we have the losses. We, we just don't have the wins that we want. But I really think they're coming. But I think the roster is, is from my first day here and even the second year, third year, each year is getting more and more speed, more and more athleticism. Your defense only has one sack through three games now. Georgia Tech doesn't, didn't throw much, I understand that. But, and none from a defensive lineman or really a, a linebacker. How much improvement are you looking for? Yeah, that's the one thing we talked about. You gotta, we got we to gotta, we gotta get the passer with, with – with, with we got we to gotta rush the passer much better. And we got to get four-man pressure. I think what has happened with some of those games, you know, you know, teams really had us reeling because they could throw or run. And so where you get more sacks as you get in third down, third and long, and, you know, we got to get teams in third and long. If we do that, then we'll get a lot more sacks. Anything else? I think he's ready. He looks, he looks good running up and down the field, you know. He better be ready to play. Thank you guys so much.